Hello, Gathering family, and welcome to the Corona Passover Family Festival. Uh, unfortunately, we will not be meeting together at the gathering this year, and we will be meeting in everyone's homes. And so even though everybody will be separated in their homes, we will still have a Zoom going on to try to find a way to connect us together. But in the meantime, I wanted to give a few items that we use, that we will be using this Saturday night as part of the Seder service and give you a little bit of the background or maybe a little bit of the symbol symbolism to each of these things. And to begin with, first of all, uh, Passover is a celebration. It's a joyous time. It's, it's very unique. And it's a time that we make special by dressing up. Sometimes we make it special by busting out the, the special china that we have, or, you know, you might have some of your own festive plates that you want to use for this very special day. So it is special, it is a special time, and so we make it as special as we possibly can. So to begin the service uh, in the Haggadah, we always begin with the lighting of the candle, which the light represents the light of the world. There's a tremendous amount of biblical symbolism within the light, and it always begins with the, the oldest woman in the house lighting the candle. Then what you'll notice is that there is a Seder plate, and hopefully ev all, everyone has a Seder plate. They've picked one up from the gathering that you'll use in this service. The Seder plate, Seder actually means order, and so there's an actual order to the service in which we will follow, and we use the Haggadah, which you will have already had emailed to you. The Haggadah is a part of the service because it actually means, it's, it symbolizes it's basically the telling of the story. It's a teaching as we walk through this experience together. And that's one of the important things, one of the important symbols of this is that it is an experience. It's not just a telling of history, it's not just a remembering of something that happened to some people a long time ago. This is an experience. And so as we go through all the items and the symbolism of all the things that are on the table, you are to reflect on these and make them yours. Make this experience a part of your life. And so on the first part of the, the Seder plate, you'll see the, the roasted shank bone. The roasted shank bone represents the Pesach, the Passover sacrifice, which is extremely important to us and as followers of Messiah. This is something we're actually gonna be talking about more next week when we talk about uh, the resurrection. Then what you'll see on the plate is the egg or the Hagidah, Hagigah, I'm sorry. Uh, the egg in its circular shape represents the circle of life. It represents hope for new beginnings, which would be important during this time because there's a lot of people around us who need hope, who might need a new beginning. What you'll find next on the table is the marar. The marar is the bitter herbs. It's the horseradish. And if you can get fresh Horseradish, this is extremely bitter, and you want it to be as bitter and as maybe hot as possible because this is the item that represents the bitterness of slavery. And so when you bite into this, it is just gross uh, and as bitter as possible. But this is to remind you of your own experience. The next on the plate is the choroset, which is the apples and the nuts. The horoset is the mortar that, the, that was making the bricks the Israelites used to make the bricks in Egypt. And so it's this consistency that reminds us of that. Then the harzerzet, which is another bitter herb. We typically use just the horseradish for this, but this goes along with the halal sandwich, which is towards the end of the service in the Haggadah. Then you have the karpos, which is the parsley. It represents spring, it represents new life, and it represents change, which is really important because in one part of the service, you'll be dipping it into the salt water, which the salt in the water as you bite into this represents the tears, the many tears that were shed during those years in slavery. And we can't have a Passover service without matzah, right? And so matzah is used throughout the service and there's different symbolism that we'll be using throughout the service as well. And there's beginning and towards the end and a very fun opportunity for the kids to do. But the matzah represents the bread that the Israelites left Egypt with. 
It was uncooked, it was unleavened. It also represents the fragility of freedom and it represents affliction. And so as we get to the end, you'll notice that I haven't poured any wine yet, but make sure that you have plenty of wine because there's four glasses that you will have to drink of wine. Now, as you pour these glasses, you don't pour your own glass, you actually pour your neighbor's glass and you pour a glass for them. And remember, when it's poured, when you have time to drink this and at, part, at the part of the service, you have to drink the whole thing. You don't just get to sip on it. So make sure you don't fill a full glass. Just go a little bit of time. And if you don't like the wine, you can always use grape juice as well. And so as we move through this Passover service and as we go through this, you'll be following us as we go through the Haggadah. Or if you want to do it on your own, you have the Haggadah that is emailed to you. But this is the symbolism that we will be using and we will um, be talking a lot about on Saturday night. So if you can join us for the Zoom, please do. And if you are going to be doing this on your own, I, uh, I thank you for being a part of this very special night with us. And we are looking forward to hearing about the experiences at your home and seeing the pictures that you sent us. So praise God and thank you for what you're doing and have a fantastic Seder meal.